no one does this, but <laughs> it works. <laughs> you should dig down to approximately that, you know, two inch depth in corn, two and a half inch depth, get some soil and see if you can make a ball. Okay. If it's sticking together and it retains that ball, generally speaking, it's probably too wet. Hi, my name is Jake Vosikemper, Director of Agronomy and Research here at Liquor Grow. Hi, I'm Katie Hess, Director of Sales and Marketing here at Liquor Grow. Dr. Jake, planting is like here. Um, you talk to the guys in the southern part of our territory and they're hearing about people planting beans a little bit farther south of that. Not sure exactly where, but that's what I'm hearing. Um, it's April 3rd, 4th now. Yeah. and uh, Soil temperatures yesterday were in the low 50s, high 40s. Yes, so it's it's going to be here before you know it. So before these planters roll out of the sheds officially and get into the field, uh, what are three or four things that we can talk about today to kind of help guys have a really good experience this spring and things to think about? Yeah, as I look at the forecast here, I, I off the cuff, it's like the eighth or ninth, we get into a string of highs in the 60s and it looks like it's going to stay that way. To me, that looks like it's you know, going to be time to put planters in the ground in general, right? For corn or soybean, generally speaking. So we just came off of a really nice rain here in eastern Iowa, and the ground is wet as things dry up. When do you know that it's dry enough and fit enough to go? And when should you hold off? Yeah, that's a great point, Katie. Uh, we did get quite a bit of rain, generally speaking, across the geography. That's great because we needed it. When you go to decide, you know, if you're going to plant or evaluate the soil conditions, you know, what should you be looking for? And no one does this, but <laughs> it works. <laughs> you should dig down to approximately that, you know, two inch depth in corn, two and a half inch depth, get some soil and see if you can make a ball. Okay. If it's sticking together and it retains that ball, generally speaking, it's probably too wet. Okay. But if it falls apart and crumbles, that's definitely dry enough to plant. I mean, that's one way to gauge how wet it is um, and if it's too wet. If the ground is too wet and you're planting soybeans, you know, you can have a little bit of sidewall compaction. We often think um, sidewall compaction in soybeans is not as detrimental as corn. You know, I've walked a lot of fields in the fall and turns out sidewall compaction will haunt you um, way into the season. Absolutely. Will it haunt you into the soybeans? Yeah, it absolutely will haunt you in soybeans. Um, and the question might be, well, why? Okay, well, when you have sidewall compaction, all or majority of your roots get caught in that furrow, right? I mean, that's what happens. And so when that happens, I mean, you you don't have the rooting area and depth you need to explore for mineral nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, zinc, boron, everything, right? You can't get adequate water. Nitrogen fixation is gonna be severely limited. The plant is going to be under a lot of stress in general, so you're going to be exposed to a lot more root diseases. Uh, there's nothing agronomically or physiologically from a plant perspective that's good about having roots trapped in a furrow. Sure, makes me feel a little claustrophobic when you talk like that, yes. Jake. Um, and you know, I think what you're trying to say is, unless it happens in that furrow, the moisture, the nutrients, the roots are not going to try no. to penetrate much out farther out no. to find anything else. They're going to want to try, but they can't. Right. Yeah. Okay, Jake, um, let's talk, switch gears a little bit and talk about planters. I know you and your crew are working on getting uh, the research planter ready to go right now. I know there's a lot of farmers, you know, putting their planters together right now to get out the door. Mm -hmm. um, what are some things that you're thinking about? Well, one thing that I've been concerned about over the years is I do a lot of service calls, go look at a lot of problems. And so I've seen my fair share of sidewalk compaction. And you would think with all the technology that exists today on these planters, you would think because we have row by row uh, downforce control, you would think that sidewall compaction would be a non-issue. Well, and Jake, even today, some of these planters have auto downforce available, uh, right? Yeah, so. absolutely. And you would think because we have all this technology and the ability to control the downforce on a, on a row by row basis that we wouldn't have sidewall compaction, but I still see it maybe as much as I ever have. So I think you need to understand your equipment. I, I know for a fact you can put limits on just how much downforce is applied. So I'd be thinking about that. Get your planner out there, play with those limits, understand, you know, when you need to put a, a bottom to that downforce so you don't get sidewalk compaction. If you're planting deep enough, you don't need more downforce. So you're talking about artificially creating sidewall compaction by your planter. Absolutely. Not being set correctly. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. But beyond that, call your service rack rep. Yes. Right. That's my general little piece of you knowledge. You do not right? want to ask yes, Jake. No, no. <laughs> I still have springs on my little four-row planters. So. Anything else that you're thinking about as um, you're getting ready for spring? 
Well, Katie, I guess if we want to keep these, these videos under five minutes, that's probably enough, don't you think? Sure, and I'm sure you're ready to get back into work on your planter. I am ready to get back and work on my planter. I actually think you're ready to watch your crew work on your planter. Well, that's, that's, that's part. That's part. Stay in the know with Liquid Grove.